Good evening. This is the September 4th meeting of the San Francisco County Transportation Authority Community Advisory Committee, or CAC. I'm Kat Siegel, Chair of the CAC. Our Vice Chair is Naj Daniels. Madam Clerk, please do a roll call to ensure we have quorum, and then please read an announcement about public comment. CAC members, when I call your name, please say present to ensure quorum. Member Bars? Bars absent. Vice Chair Daniels? Daniels present. Daniels present. Member Ford? Ford absent. Member Kim? Kim present. Kim present. Member Levine? Levine present. Levine present. Member Margarita? Margarita absent. Member Milford Rosales? Milford Rosales present. Member Ortega? Member Ortega present. Ortega present. Chair Siegel? Siegel present. Siegel present. Chair, we have quorum. Now I will make my public comment. Um, <clears throat> public comment will be available for each item on this agenda via telephone by calling one of the numbers listed on the front of the agenda or joining the meeting through the Zoom link. Once you join, you will be able to listen to the meeting as a participant. To make public comment on an item when the item is called, members of the public participating by Zoom wishing to speak should use the raise hand feature or dial star nine. Do not press star nine again or you will be removed from the queue. When you are asked to unmute yourself, press star six or the unmute button to unmute yourself. The live operator will advise that you will be allowed two minutes to speak. When your two minutes are up, we will move on to the next caller. Best practices are to speak slowly, clearly, and turn down the volume of any televisions or radios around me. Thank you. That concludes my announcements. Thank you so much. That puts us on item two, which is the chair's report, and this is an information item. This is our first meeting after summer board recess. The Transportation Authority Board will have its first post-recess meeting next week on September 10th. September is transit month in the Bay Area, celebrating the buses, trains, ferries, and people that keep the Bay Area moving. There are ride contests, activities, and events that can be found on the transit month website at lu.ma slash transit month 2024. As this body well knows, public transit is essential to achieve San Francisco's and the region's climate equity and economic goals. However, some of our largest transit operators, including Barton Muni, are struggling financially given changed travel behavior and greatly increased work from home that has significantly reduced transit ridership and the revenues that support transit, such as fares, and for Muni, parking revenues and general fund support for transit. We have heard about this periodically as the fiscal cliff facing transit as federal and state pandemic relief funds run out. I just wanted to mention for CAC members and those watching that staff anticipates presentations from BART, Muni, and Caltrain at the September 24th Transportation Authority Board meeting. I encourage folks to tune in. The agenda should be posted at least 72 hours in advance on the agency's website at www.sfcta.org. Meanwhile, the Metropolitan Transportation Commission continues to hold Transportation Revenue Measure Select Committee meetings, seeking to achieve a strong level of consensus to inform state authorizing legislation for a potential regional transportation revenue measure. This work follows Senators Weiner and Wahab putting SB 1031 on pause earlier this legislative session. I look forward to hearing from staff on this effort at an upcoming meeting. One more transit-themed item. During July, the Transportation Authority hosted two virtual town hall events seeking input on the Erie 19th Avenue subway and regional connection study. If you missed the town halls, the recordings are available at sfcta.org slash Geary 19th, where you can also sign up for project updates. Further, the project team will have a survey up on the website later this month, offering another way to provide input for those who miss the town halls or want to weigh in again. Switching to the east side of the city, the Mission Bay School Access Plan project team will be presenting findings from the first round of outreach and the key barriers identified at the in-person Mission Bay Citizens Advisory Committee meeting on September 12th from 5 to 7 p.m. at Generation Thrive at the Chase Center. 
More information about the project is on the project website at sfcta.org slash projects slash school hyphen access hyphen plan. Lastly, I wanted to acknowledge we have a smaller group today. Two of our members have stepped off the CAC, Rosa Chen, our District 3 representative, and Mariko Davidson, our District 11 representative. On behalf of the CAC, I want to thank them both for their service and valuable input over the course of their tenure on this body. I appreciate we are all volunteers and have limited time to dedicate to our many interests and obligations. I know that staff is preparing certificates of appreciation to send out to both Rosa and Mariko on behalf of the Transportation Authority. Thank you, Rosa and Mariko. Uh, finally, meeting management notes. Um, CAC members, please be sure to speak directly into the microphone so folks in the back of the room can hear you. And please limit your questions to a max of two questions per agenda item. Uh, CAC members and folks in the hearing room, please turn off or silence all electronic devices and computer notifications during the meeting. That's it for announcements. Are there any questions or comments from CAC members on the chair's report? Uh, not seeing any. Is there anyone in the room wishing to give public comment on the chair's report? Thank you, Edward Mason. I uh, would like to add that on September the 21st and 22nd, Caltrain will initiate all electric service. And uh, for that weekend, uh, on the website, uh, they reflect the fact that there will be free fares. So you can go from here to San Jose uh, on a trip. And also, there will be events uh, in, uh, you can sign up for in Palo Alto and one other city, I escapes my memory, whether it's San Mateo, whatever, it's on the website for uh, their inaugural uh, celebration that they're going to be having on that weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Um, is there any remote public comment on the chair's report? Not seeing any remote public comment for this item. Great, thank you so much. Public comment on the chair's report is closed. Um, that puts us on item three, which is uh, to approve the minutes of the July 24th, 2024 meeting. And this is an action item. Do any CAC members have any questions or comments on the minutes? Uh, is there anyone in the hearing room wishing to give public comment on the minutes? Not seeing any. Is there any uh, remote public comment on the minutes? There's no remote public comment on the minutes. Great. Uh, may I have a motion and a second to approve the minutes? I'll move approval. Okay. Move by Member Levine, seconded by Vice Chair Daniels. Madam Clerk, would you please take a roll call vote? On the motion to approve item three, member Bars. Bars, aye. Bars, aye. Vice Chair Daniels. Aye. Daniels, aye. Member Ford. Ford, absent. Member Kim. Kim, aye. Kim, aye. Member Levine. Levine, aye. Levine, aye. Member Margarita. Can I call to send window of steam? Okay. Uh, Margarita abstain. Member Milford Rosales. Milford Rosales, aye. Milford Rosales, aye. Member Ortega. Member Ortega, aye. Member Ortega, aye. Chair Siegel. Siegel, aye. Chair Siegel, aye. There are seven ayes. Uh, the motion is approved. Great, thank you so much. Uh, that puts us on item four, which is to adopt a motion of support to authorize the executive director to execute master agreements, program supplemental agreements, cooperative agreements, fund transfer agreements, and any amendments thereto with the California Department of Transportation for receipt of state funds for the Bayview Street Safety and Truck Relief Study in the amount of $525,000 and state funds for planning, programming, and monitoring in the amount of $199,000. And this is an action item. 
And, uh, Elisa Paz, uh, Prin Principal Transportation Planner, is here to present this item. Good evening, CHC. Okay, so I'm going to go over the two proposed resolutions. These are to meet the Caltrans requirements to receive funding. The first is for the Bayview Street Safety and Truck Relief Study. Um, again, this is for about $525,000, and it advances a recommendation from the Connect SF Street and Freeway st Strategy. Um, at a high level, the study is developing a more comprehensive, under comprehensive understanding of freight activity in the Bayview neighborhood, and will also come up with recommendations for potential policies and infrastructure improvements to direct heavy truck traffic away from the residential and commercial districts. It will also include safety recommendations to limit collision risks for people walking and biking and strategy to increase the adoption of low or zero emission uh, freight and delivery vehicles. Um, we expect the project to start in early 2025 and be completed in 2027. The second resolution is for um, planning, programming, and monitoring. The proposed resolution would also meet Caltrans requirements that we can accept the $199,000 in state uh, planning, programming, and monitoring funds. Um, and as the Congestion Management Agency for San Francisco, we use a portion of the state transportation improvement program funds for project planning, development, and oversight of state and federal funding projects, such as the Caltrain, Caltrain electrification. Um, the intent is to support uh, grant compliance and project delivery. And I can take any question. Thank you so much. Uh, are there any questions or comments on this item from members? Good evening. Thank you so much for your presentation. As a resident of District 10, this is a relief. This has been a very high concern of the residents, of the emissions, of all of the things that happen from the freights that travel through our district so often. So I'm happy to see that it's beginning. Thank you. Are there any other questions or comments from members? Uh, Member Ortega? Yeah, I just, I just, um, <clears throat> Really, really quickly, I'm sorry, I'm just trying to read this really fast. Um, how long do we anticipate the study to be again? The big they do study on the freight train? Yeah, the Caltrans, I believe, is a two year, uh, it has two years to complete the study under the Caltrans grant. Okay. Thank you. Are there any other questions or comments from members? Uh, is there any public comment in the room on this item? Not seeing any. Is there any remote public comment on this item? There is no remote public comment. Great. Um, thank you so much for the presentation. May I have a motion and a second for this item? Moved by Member Margarita. Second. Seconded by Vice Chair Daniels. Uh, Madam Clerk, can we get a roll call vote? On the motion to approve item four, member Bars. Bars, aye. Bars, aye. Vice Chair Daniels. Daniels, aye. Daniels, aye. Member Ford. Ford absent. Member Kim. Kim, aye. Kim, aye. Member Levine. Levine, aye. Levine, I. Member Margarita. Margarita, I. Margarita, I. Member Milford Rosales. Milford Rosales, I. Milford Rosales, I. Member Ortega. Ortega, I. Ortega, I. Chair Siegel. Siegel, I. Siegel, I. There are eight eyes. The motion is approved. Great. Uh, that puts us on item five, which is to adopt a motion of support to allocate $284,000 in Prop L funds with conditions and allocate $3.4 million in traffic congestion mitigation tax funds for three requests. And this is an action item. Uh, Mike Pickford, Principal Transportation Planner, is here with us to present this item. Good evening. Uh, 
we've got three requests, as Chair said. Uh, the first request is for $159,000 in neighborhood transportation program funds for planning for the Great Highway Gateway study. This study would focus on technical analysis and design visioning at the three closely spaced intersections of Lincoln Way closest to Ocean Beach. Um, that's uh, uh, La Playa, a very lower Great Highway, and then Martin Luther King um, as it goes into the park. Uh, so this study would consider geometric design improvements, traffic circulation and signal, um, placemaking features, streetscape enhancements, and this is all with the goal of making multimodal safety, wayfinding, navigation, all, all sorts of improvements like that, generally creating a more pleasant driving, biking and walking environment. The study would consider known future developments in the area and would also focus on providing a welcoming entrance for a potential Great Highway Park or Promenade should the voters approve Proposition K in November. If the voters reject Proposition K, the study would um, the scope of the study would be reconsidered and revised accordingly. SFMTA expects the study to be uh, completed by the end of 2025 and will uh, present a final report. Uh, the next request is for from SF Public Works for $125,000 for design and construction of pavement markings, including unique, including new unique crosswalks at Clement Street and Sixth Avenue. What? Oh, then you have to double check your own work. <laughs> I think we got the mute set yeah. up there. Um, Sorry. <laughs> um, glad to know you're paying attention here. Uh, the um, So these proposed intersection improvements at 6th and Clement would help improve safety, walkability, and overall neighborhood awareness at this location, which is um, right in the heart of inner Richmond businesses, shops, cafes, restaurants, homes, and schools. SF Public Works expects that all of the work would be completed by June 2026. And then the final uh, request is from SFMTA for about three and a half million dollars in uh, the TNC tax funds for the next round of the Vision Zero Quick Build program. The Quick Build program, which we've funded for a number of years, designs and installs reversible and adjustable traffic control measures such as roadway paint, signs, signal timing improvements, lane reconfigurations, parking and loading adjustments uh, that all improve safety and can, can be implemented more quickly than traditional infrastructure. For this round of the program, SFMTA is focusing on three types of improvements. The first is daylighting, which will enhance sight lines and visibility at about 300 intersections. This is in accordance with Assembly Bill 413, which uh, has, uh, includes restricting parking near the crosswalks. The locations um, near schools would be prioritized with this tranche of funding. The second type of improvement is speed reductions, uh, which would be done across approximately 70 corridors that are newly yeah. eligible under That's Assembly Bill 43. Um, um, so these corridors would be uh, eligible for a five mile per hour uh, reduction in their speed limit and the locations are to be determined and this request would fund the analysis that would help prioritize those locations. Uh, the third of the three um, improvement types is bikeway hardening. This would install concrete medians at approximately 200 locations in, a place, in place of plastic delineator posts, which are currently used to separate bicycle and automobile traffic. Um, the request, uh, this amount of requested would also include funding for outreach and communications support to engage community members about the proposed projects, including translating materials into multiple languages. And uh, all of this work would be done by December 2026. With that, I can take any questions and we do have project managers on the phone. Thanks so much for the presentation. Uh, Member Levine. Oh. Thanks for the presentation. I, I just uh, have a question uh, on the Clement Street. Oops, sorry. Thank you. Uh, on the Clement Street uh, improvement uh, project, um, I've noticed um, that, uh, some of this project will involve uh, crosswalk striking, right? I've noticed uh, that uh, Public Works, instead of painting the crosswalk striping, in many places, they're now laying down these stripes and I don't know, gluing them down or whatever. And they simply are not adhering. There's a whole raft of them over by UCSF that are peeling away. They're fairly new and it's a bad idea. 
And it really, unless they can find a way to keep them adhering to the pavement, they ought to get rid of it and go back to uh, the old method of uh, painting. Uh, so we can, I think we can have public works give a more technical explanation, but okay. this this would be um, to fund a, a custom design, which would be um, a thermoplastic, which is a pretty uh, durable material. But uh, does public works want to add a little bit more um, actual knowledge about crosswalk materials? Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Michelle with San Francisco Public Works, one of the project managers here with the Streetscape program. Uh, the thermoplastic crosswalks that are usually installed throughout the city are installed by actually MTA. My understanding of the thermoplastic crosswalks, which is basically what we're also going to be using more or less for the decorative crosswalks, um, actually adhere pretty well. My understanding of the type that uh, is taped onto the ground is usually for only temporary crosswalks um, when we have like construction zones or a uh, temporary condition. Um, if there is like a, a, a situation that may be of concern, um, I would definitely suggest talking to uh, three one, calling 311 because that would definitely be routed to the appropriate parties, whether it be the contractor or um, the city agency that's installed the temporary or permanent crosswalk. Hopefully that helps. <laughs> Thank you. Well, the, the, the striping that I saw was particularly over at UCSF was not temporary and it was fairly new and um, it was already peeling off. So uh, I might want to take a look at it and uh, just I, I'm sure that's not the only place in the city that it's a problem. So in the future with, with any work that's going to be done, I believe they should resolve that kind of a problem. It doesn't make sense to just... Uh, lay it down and have it peel off again. Thank you. Uh, Member Kim. Uh, thank you, Chair, and thank you for uh, presentation. I have a question on the uh, Great Highway uh, Gateway Study. Um, yeah, I see the, uh, this is a uh, location limited to uh, the intersection Great Highway at Lincoln and Martin Luther King Highway at La Playa. Is it correct? Uh, yeah, so there's um, a few intersections that are very, very close together. Uh, so there's um, starting from the from west to east, it's uh, Great Highway and then Lower Great Highway and then La Playa is south of Lincoln and then uh, Martin Luther King is north of Lincoln. So there's there's kind of, depending on how you count, three intersections there. Uh, yeah, and then I have a question. Uh, this one is not um, part of a five YEP, or, or this is an additional project, right? Yeah, so, so this, the proposal is to um, fund this through the Neighborhood Transportation Program, and that program has its own five YPP, uh, which is, um, we programmed um, placeholder funds and then uh, these projects are um, developed in consultation with the district offices uh, and, and uh, prioritized in between the agencies and the district office. Oh, uh, yeah, but uh, my question is that uh, it, it, it says, is this project in the equity private community? It says no. And does this project benefit this advantaged population? No. So I'm I'm questioning why the prop uh, fund this fund uh, this project because it's not related to equity private community nor you know disadvantaged populations. I would say quite something. There's not a requirement that all projects need to uh, have those features. We we uh, provide that information for you know transparency and um, just so that. Okay. Are aware. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then the, I, I, I'm questioning the timing. Uh, as I know, there's a pilot program going on. So we they open the Great Highway to the public vehicle, we can uh, close to the vehicle so people use as a park. But those pilot program ends December 2025. So even though this November, you know, whatever result come is passed or not, still those pilot program keep going on. So after pilot program, we will get traffic data or the detailed work 
So if proper planning, we better wait until those pilot program finish and then use data. So that way, this kind of project can be redundant, you know, two different uh, uh, research projects going on. So I'm questioning the timing is too soon. You know, November elections happen, and then right after January, this uh, project starts. But uh, yeah, I have a question why right? two uh, redundant project going on, and then maybe a proper planning. Uh, this is not urgent one. As I know, even though November election passed, we don't have any fund to build the park or you know fix anything. It's not ready. There's no fund. So then we have a plenty of time. So why don't we use the result of pilot program to apply this planning study? Would you like to hear from SFMTA yeah. about the, the work yeah, that they right. plan to do kind of in the timing? Is, I think uh, Jen Wong is on the line. Actually, Mike, I'm, it's Kaba. I'm here. Okay. I'm actually on my bike on the way to um, Bayview for another meeting. So pardon the wind. Um, so the question is, um, so in the ARF that is in front of you, it says that this is, um, this assumes that the Prop K would pass and we would like to do the planning around this intersection. Um, if Prop K does indeed pass, we just want to be prepared. And if it does not pass, as you are correct, there is a continued pilot program. And that's why it says, if it does not pass, we would reevaluate the scope and schedule and budget of this effort um, after the election, right? So this, this is just so that we could be ready if indeed the voters do pass Prop K. And if they do not pass Prop K, we would reevaluate the proposal at, that is in front of you. Ava, do you mind introducing yourself uh, to everyone? Right. I'm not sure if they know you. Sure, I'm Hava Kronenberg. I'm the project, the program manager from MTA for Great Highway. Um, but Great Highway is actually a uh, Rec and Park property. So Rec and Park is the project lead. But these adjacent intersections are um, MTA property. So they just have some geometry and signal issues. And if um, if Great Highway is no longer used by vehicles, we would like to rethink that geometry. Yeah, but I, um, thank you for answer. But I have a question. Even though the Prop K passed, you know, we don't, uh, still pilot program going on, which means we keep current situation, current status until end of next year. So not immediate change yet. That's my understanding. And then there's a uh, turning build a park. We don't have any fund or plan for the build apart, which means, you know, not nothing happened or nothing ready, but why we need to study right after the election? You know, we need to find the funding source or, you know, uh, waiting for still pilot program going on. But uh, I, I feel like it's too hurry. If I can clarify something, my understanding is that if Prop K passes, that that is legislation that supersedes the existing pilot. So the if Prop K is voted by um, the voters and it's fifty plus one, then that then the pilot is concluded. It is legislation that supersedes the pilot. Yeah, let me and, ask you. And, and uh, Prop K passed. Does uh, MTM plan to close the street right away or? Um, and, uh, what's the plan? Even though if the Prop K passed. And then what's the date, you know, those uh, uh, Green Highway close to private vehicle? So I can only speak to the, the ARF in front of you. So if there's questions about Great Highway, um, you know, you should invite Rec Park. Uh, excuse but me, this though. Is, this, is the, this is about um, the intersections that are adjacent to Great, Great Highway. Right, but my question is, you don't know the time you close Great Highway, but you are planning for the intersection. Yeah, that's that's usually we like to plan in advance of um, of things happening. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your answer. Uh, Member Milford Rosales.
Thank you very much. Um, I wanted to ask about the bike lane hardening project. Um, looking through the the initial description, I was uh just curious if there were if there's a place where one could see I guess the size and the type of concrete barriers that would be used here. Uh, there's kind of a mixture all over the city, and in some places it's like specially made and molded and poured just for location. In other places, they're standard seemingly more inexpensive uh, pieces that are used. I'm just curious if this is like a bespoke plan or like something off the shelf. Good question. And uh, I think Jen Wong would be the appropriate person to answer that question, I believe. Hi there, good evening. Um, my name is Jen Wong. I am a uh, transportation planner uh, with San Francisco uh, MTA Streets Division, um, leading the Quick Build program. Um, and in terms of the type of bikeway hardening, um, I think we would um, be looking at uh, leveraging um, the ability to create um, some uh, concrete medians. Um, I think in certain locations of our bicycle network, um, currently uh, I, I may have seen um, the rubber um, curbs um, that uh, prominently feature on, uh, I think, Valencia Street uh, right now. Um, and in some other locations, uh, you may see a uh, K-Rail installation. Um, but in terms of this ARF, um, we are looking at uh, concrete work. Um, these would be uh, devices that we um, would uh, consult with our partners in public works um, in order to uh, create some some site specific um, uh, shapes uh, in terms of the width and the length um, so that it uh, is suitable for uh, its specific location. So to clarify, this would be something more similar to the curb protection done at at Third and Townsend or custom molds were built and poured as opposed to doing something like the Valencia bike lane, but with concrete curbs, like what you'd have in a parking lot in place of the rubber ones. Yes, that's correct. Um, some of the past examples um, that uh, would be along the same, uh, would be along the lines of what we are uh, trying to pursue um, would be the ones um, such as on Third Street um, near the ballpark. Um, and also uh, what you currently see on Division Street, um, for example, between 10th and 11th Street. Yeah, great examples, thank you. Thanks. Mr. Daniels? Um, hi, good evening. I think this is just a clarifying question around when we get ready to vote on this item, are we able to separate the projects? Okay, great, that's my request, to separate the projects. Um, I have a question about the um, the daylighting. I'm really glad to see that um, that MTA is planning to to daylight, particularly around schools. Um, I was wondering. My understanding was that this MTA is not planning to necessarily actually paint at every intersection in the city. Is that still the plan? What would be like? Is there a plan for the scope of, of intersections that would actually be painted and what what the plan is for enforcement at intersections that are not painted? Yeah, thank you for the question. Um, so in regards to uh, daylighting, um, this year, we have been going through all the intersections of the Hindry network to make sure that daylighting is included. And so as part of um, the allocation request um, for tonight, um, that is our effort to prepare ourselves for what's coming after that. Um, and so the, the next areas that we want to prioritize are intersections around schools. Um, and again, that's what this request is focused on. Um, Beyond that, as part of uh, AB 413, um, as you mentioned, we'll soon enough um, apply to all intersections of, of California. Um, and this is um, this allocation is one step towards putting resources to that. 
Um, as for, so we're kind of taking it one step at a time. Um, so, uh, you know, beyond uh, the school locations, I think we'll have to reevaluate again to see how to prioritize yet the next set because there are a whole lot of intersections <laughs> in the city. <laughs> There's a lot. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. That makes sense. Thank you. Yeah, I would definitely, I guess, advocate for it. I know it would be a huge project, but trying to actually paint as many intersections as possible. Otherwise, I'm afraid it would be like people, drivers aren't going to know how to be compliant with the with the rules. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm glad I'm glad to see that we're, we're planning to daylight more than just the high injury network. Thank you so much. Um, are there any other questions or comments from members on this item? Member Bars? Yes, thank you. Um, I have a question on the Great Highway Gateway study. Um, uh, for starters, I, I just like to say that I uh, really appreciate MTA staff looking ahead and planning for, uh, for what would to do if Prop K were to pass, and also that if it weren't to pass, that that's like I'm sure that they would very responsibly look out for ways to reprogram the funds with help from SFCTA. Um, so I, I wanted to share that as a comment. Um, as a question, I did would like I would like to understand: Are there problematic traffic conditions at those intersections today? Could you could you describe a little more about? what the traffic patterns are like, and if there's room for improvement now that this study would help sort of regardless of what would happen with Prop K? Um, okay, thank you. Is that the end of the question, Ms. Bars? Yeah, yes, that was the end of the question. Okay, okay. sorry, and I think I'm on now. So I'm, uh, I've I'm now here where I am. Um, so the current configuration, as many of you know, your, your locals, um, it has two left turn lanes southbound um, from Great Highway, and then two left turn lanes uh, heading, um, well, there's two, there's two separate two left double left turn lanes. That's something we're, we don't love as an agency, but given the, the demand that's currently there, you know, it makes sense. Um, I think that there is a, a signal upgrade coming in at Great Highway in Lincoln as part of a TA allocation that was allocated a few years back for the Great Highway signals replacement. So the signal at Great Highway and Lincoln is already slated for an upgrade. And similarly, I believe there's an allocation that I thought was coming this uh, month, but is not um, for a, sig a new signal to replace the stop sign at La Playa at um, Lincoln. So with those two signals, um, one being an upgrade and one being new, um, as well as the kind of existing road geometry. I think that there is indeed an opportunity for us to revisit how that intersection, those intersections work together and how to ensure that we um, are building the, uh, putting the signals in the best place possible um, for whatever future condition the great highway exists in. Um, so I think the the short of it is between the, the signal upgrade, signal new signal, and the existing geometry, there's a lot of opportunities. And um, I don't feel like there are, and there's certainly um, just pedestrian crossing issues. I think we see a lot of people confused when they get um, out of MLK in Golden Gate Park and are trying to head towards Great Highway, whether they're using the trail on a weekday or whether they're using the roadway on a weekend. Um, there's definitely confusion. And I also understand that for drivers, there's also a lot of confusion with the flashing yellow that is currently there. So the point being, um, I'm not here to offer any solutions. I think that these are all the issues that we're seeing that we would hope to um, discuss and resolve through this planning effort. Thank you, that's that's very helpful. So, and as I understand it there, um, from, from what I hear in the community, although I am not the district four rep who's sitting to my left, she may have different opinions, um, but that there's definitely a lot of room for improvement, both for people who are crossing at those intersections, but also driving. And I, I also wanted to clarify, um, would improving these signals, either adding the new one or upgrading it, would that improve driving conditions at all? 
Um, hmm. Well, the signal would function. The signal that is currently um, deteriorating and, and at the end of its lifespan would continue to exist, which I think would certainly be a bonus for those who are driving. And um, the one at La, La Playa would allow people to, um, it replaces a stop sign. So for those who are inconvenienced by a stop controlled intersection, a signal is more, um, uh, often can give priority instead of to all, in, uh, all approaches, it gives priority to whoever the signal timing is geared towards. So it may be geared towards um, great uh, drivers coming from Great Highway. So that would improve their driving experience. Great, thank you. Member Board. I apologize, I was very late with school pickup. But so if you've already addressed this, given the Prop K situation, is it better to defer this study until January? Um, my understanding is that, uh, you know, we were, we have no problem holding this back. If, uh, should Prop K not be passed by the voters, my understanding is that this would be, you know, revisited and should Prop K be passed by the voters, this will, uh, I believe the CTA board would vote on it after, um, November. I believe, I don't, my, uh, Mike, you're going to have, Mr. Pickford, you're going to have to correct me. I, I'm not, maybe this is a question for Mr. Pickford. <laughs> Uh, we we did uh, discuss actually a little bit earlier the the um, you know timing related to the current pilot and and that sort of thing. Um, the uh, SBCTA board would consider this funding next month, um, it, so it would be uh, considered prior to the election. Um, but you know there's there's not a ton of time between when the board votes on this and when the public votes on Proposition K. Uh, Which I guess is why it's relatively inconsequential to wait until the public votes, or not. This is a, yeah. Um, if I could, this is Anna Laporte, um, Deputy Director for Policy and Programming. This is a neighborhood program request from the district supervisor's office. And so we've been working on the schedule as we do with any neighborhood program request to align with the wishes of the of the offices. So. Um, are there any other questions or comments from members? Yeah, member Kim. Um, yeah, can uh, can we make the uh, separate uh, both like great highway? I want to share uh, uh, since timing uh, because the great under the great highway. Maybe someone not familiar, you know, there's a long stretch uh, connect to Sunset District, uh, Richmond District, but whole uh, the Lincoln and slow section underneath, there's a sewage uh, reservoirs there. So we cannot dig in deep enough because we have to keep it. Those functions, San Francisco, when we have heavy rain, uh, the water plant cannot process properly. So keep those uh, dirty, water lane, keep it reservoir until settle down. So those are key function. Um, so we have to keep it and then maintain it. So those highway underneath. So that's why I want to brought this plan and it related to that area, even though Prop K passed, and then extra comprehensive plan involved not only MTA or local supervisor, it involved fire department, especially PUC. Usually has dozens of access points. So think about it. The we have heavy rain comes to reservoir. After that, he or she goes in the cleanup. You might heard one sucker trapped the sewage in the ocean beach uh, several weeks ago. So they regularly maintain. So in Great Highway, a lot of planning even. They digging or change the road, it involved uh, PUC. And also, uh, Prop K pass still only banned to the private vehicle. Like emergency vehicle or fire engines still use those great highway. So, if we plan properly, all the stakeholders, not only MTA or uh, supervisor's office, it involved fire department, PUC, maybe public works, and Lake and Park. So 
maybe you know not from the January in a way better way was the result based on result if we require a lot of uh, department involved and then we better plan accordingly so I suggest uh, uh we can make the both separate so um uh, yeah this uh my motion but legion is is not against or pro this is the timing it is a city money tax money we better spend properly and smartly um should we go to public comment before we make motions okay um are there any other questions or comments from members on this item uh not seeing any is there any public comment on the room, in the room thank you uh regarding uh the great highway uh when i first read this my takeaway was is this really necessary at this time um you have one two three four great highway in the future that's going to be senior housing for 400 people so the question and the daycare center in there so the question is why are we doing any type of uh, pedestrian counts and all of that into the future when they, it's not built yet so i think this whole process is is premature we should wait until things settle down the development is there and then start evaluating it now if you have defective uh, and broken pedestrian uh, signals and all yeah okay but you know this whole process i think is really a part of a bigger process that we need to look at and just kind of step back and wait for things to fall into place um regarding the sixth avenue and clement it says thermoplastics, and uh, we all know about many plastics that are invading our environment. Um, but I, I do not have a vision in my mind as to what is Sixth and Clement going to look like. Uh, I have no idea from the literature that's available, and um, I, you know, it is. What what are we doing? You know. Uh, I have no idea what I can expect out of our tax dollars on that right now. It's just nice, fancy words saying, oh, it's going to be this and that and all the other stuff. But I cannot form a picture in my mind as to what Sixth and Clement is going to look like. Is it going to, what's going to distinguish it from all the other intersections along Clement, from Arguello out to uh, the Park Presidio? Uh, they're all alike, and they're all heavily traveled, and they're all used. So... I guess those are my comments and frustration. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, if there's no other public comment in the room, is there a public comment remotely? Yes, there is one public comment. And caller, your two minutes begins now. Eileen Bogan, Press. Eileen Bogan, president of Speak Sunset Parkside Education and Action Committee, D4 resident and former CAC member. Regarding project number one, the Great Highway Gateway Study, urging the CAC to table this project. Speak believes that it is ill-advised to agendize this project as it could be seen as electioneering. It, overall, it's questionable at best at worst, it's bad optics, as this is a deeply divisive issue. Uh, Speak would also question CAC, uh, CTA staff for bringing this project forward. This could be seen as an implied endorsement of Prop K, which would be inconsistent with the mission of city-affiliated entities. And the issues rela uh, related to the project itself, what are the total planning uh, redesign costs, what are the sources of the remaining funds needed for planning and redesign? What are the estimated construction cost and funding sources? Thank you. Thank you, caller. There is no further public comment, remote public comment. Great. Um, 
or comment on this item is closed then. Um, so it, member Kim, it sounds like you want to make a motion to sever specifically the, um, the great highway, uh, project yeah. from the rest of the item and vote on it separately. Yeah. Is that okay? Um, if, if I may, Chair yeah. Sipo, that um, doesn't require a motion. If, if you wish, you can simply just go down the projects in two groups. Oh, sure. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah, let's do that. Um, should we vote on everything besides the Great Highway first? Sounds good. All right. Uh, Madam Clerk, can we... Oh. Sorry. Oh, sorry, just reminder, you'll need to take a motion. motion is uh, is, can I get a motion on uh, all the items besides the Great Highway? Yeah. Move by Member Kim. Second. Seconded by Member Milford Rosales. Uh, can we get a roll call vote, please? I'm sorry, just, just for the record, to be clear, so the motion would be to support approval of the staff recommendation for Clement Street and the Vision Zero Quick Building Program. Okay. On the motion to approve Clement Street and the Vision Zero programs of item five, member bars. Okay. Bars I, Vice Chair Daniels. Daniels I, Member Ford. Ford I. Ford I, Member Kim. Kim I. Kim I, Member Levine. Levine, Levine I. Levine I, Member Margarita. Margarita I. Margarita I, Member Milford Rosales. Milford Rosales I. Milford Rosales I, Member Ortega. Ortega I. Ortega I, Chair Siegel. Siegel I. Siegel I. There are nine eyes. The motion is approved uh, separately on the motion to. Uh, sorry. Oh, okay. Well, the chair gets to call for a motion on the <laughs> remaining project on Great Highway. Can we get a motion and a second on the Great Highway project? King second. Oh, yeah. oh, King first. Sorry. <laughs> King first. Bar second. Motion by member Kim and seconded by member Bars. Can we get a roll call vote, please? On the motion to approve the Great Highway Gateway Study, member Bars. Bars I. Bars I, Vice Chair Daniels. No. Daniels Nay, member Ford. Ford I. Ford I, member Kim. Kim Nay. Kim Nay, uh, Member Levine. Levine I. Levine I, Member Margarita. Member Margarita Nay. Member Margarita Nay, Member Milford Rosales. I. Milford Rosales I, Member Ortega. Ortega I. Ortega I, Chair Siegel. Siegel I. Siegel I. There are six ayes. The motion is approved. Great, thank you. That puts us on item six. Uh, and thank you so much for the presentation. Um, item six is to adopt a motion of support to amend two Prop A grants to allow cost savings from the San Francisco Ferry Terminal Security Improvements uh, design phase for $132,000 and Potrero Avenue pavement re renovation projects to, to fund, respectively, San Francisco. Ferry terminal security improvements, uh, construction phase for $132,000 and DeLong Street pavement renovation for $350,000 and Sunset Boulevard pavement renovation for $387,000. And this is an action item. Uh, and Amelia Wally, Senior Program Analyst, is here to present this item. Uh, good evening, CAC members. Um, today we'll go through three requests that would amend two existing Prop K grants to allow sponsors to use their remaining balances uh, for updated scope. So on this slide is a summary table of the requests before I dive into each of them. But just to give some background, uh, when San Francisco voters approved Prop L, the new Prop L expenditure plan superseded the Prop K expenditure plan from 2003 
and in doing so assumed the Prop K financial liabilities, which included the open Prop K grants and their remaining balances. We've been monitoring those closely. We've been closing them out and deobligating remaining funds when projects are completed. And deobligated funds are treated as Prop L revenues and they're incorporated through the Prop L strategic plan updates. We've received a few amendment requests that we are presenting tonight to the CAC for approval, and we will likely have another batch um, at our next CAC meeting. So project sponsors may request amendment of Prop, pay, Prop K grants with cost savings to apply those funds toward a later project phase of the same project. Uh, like a design grant for construction, which we'll see with the uh, ferrier request coming up, or to a new scope of work if that new scope is closely related to the original, is eligible per the Prop K program from which the funds were originally allocated, and is ready to proceed. So with that, let's go through tonight's requests. Uh, first of the amendment requests is from the Golden Gate Bridge Highway and Transportation District. Um, so in October 2022, the Transportation Authority Board allocated $347,000 in Prop K funds for the design phase of the San Francisco Ferry Terminal Security Improvements Project. Uh, the design phase was completed earlier this year with $132,000 in cost savings. Bids for construction came in higher than initially estimated, so Go to Gate Bridge Highway Transportation District is requesting to use this remaining design funding toward the construction phase to fill that gap. Uh, this project will improve existing security fencing, construct additional fencing, and install improved terminal access controls to prevent unauthorized access to the terminal, passengers, and docked ferries. Uh, construction is already underway, and the improvements are estimated to be open for use by uh, December 2024. Um, so this next request uh, and the one following this one are for Public Works to use some of the remaining balance from cost savings of their Petrero Avenue pavement renovation project. Um, and as mentioned on that first slide, both requests are for similar scopes that are eligible under the street resurfacing program in the expenditure plan. Um, so Public Works is requesting to use $80,000 for design and $270,000 for construction of pavement renovation on D Long Street. Uh, the requested funds would fund demol demolition, grinding and paving of the block, uh, curb re reconstruction and retrofit, and all related and incidental work within the project limits of DeLong Street between San Diego and Santa Cruz Avenues. This work will allow Public Works to bring the block into a state of good repair for final acceptance by the city for maintenance. Um, and so the K funds requested will fund paving, while BART will be, be contributing up to $75,000 toward the acceptance process. Uh, and reimbursement of sales tax funds is conditioned upon the city's final acceptance of the segment of DeLong for maintenance and inclusion of the block and public works paving, uh, pavement management and mapping system database, which is consistent with our Prop, and, Prop K and L policy that only streets and public works pavement database are eligible for sales tax funds. Okay, and then um, this is a request also from Public Works, also to amend that existing Petrero Avenue pavement grant to allow some of the remaining balance uh, to be applied toward Sunset Boulevard pavement renovation project. Um, and so this request is for $387,181 to be used to fund change orders uh, in the Sunset Boulevard pavement renovation project. So. The Transportation Authority Board uh, allocated $3.1 million um, of Prop K funding to this project back in March of 2023. And as this first construction, uh, this first phase of construction has gotten underway, um, issues have been discovered that require additional quantities of sidewalk and curb ramps, um, largely in order to connect the new bus stops for the SFMTA's 29 Sunset Improvement Project to the corners um, to provide an accessible path of travel. And those specific locations are listed in the item materials. This project is expected to be fully open for use by June of 2026. So with that, I can take any questions you may have, and we also have project managers from Golden Gate and Public Works available here tonight. Thank you. Thank you for the presentation. Um, member Ortega. Hello, thank you for the presentation. Um, I would like to have finance of the city for dummies again, uh, come, come in, come here. And so I just, I want to make sure I'm understanding sort of, uh, all of, all of these correctly and sort of how we're doing the allocation of funds here. So based on what you, you said first, the San Francisco ferry terminal, the design phase came in under budget. So we allocated more money than they needed. And they want to use that existing money for the construction phase. So 
this is not new money, this is already allocated money, and it's just going from design to construction. Um, also, side note, that's awesome. We came in under budget, so yay. Um, so then the next two are the DeLong Street pavement renovation and the Sunset Boulevard pavement renovation. And you say that those are coming from the Portrero Avenue pavement renovation fund. So I guess, so I, I don't know this geography very well. So I guess my first question is the long street near Portrero Avenue or are they like in the same neighborhood or am I just completely off base? I think, oh, okay. I think the same time. Uh, I'm very bad at remembering street names. So I'm, this this is yes. silly. <laughs> I know. They are not, yeah, they're, they're not, they're in different pens. Oh. <laughs> Okay, okay, great. So they are in different parts of the city. So so I guess I have like a few questions about this. Um the first is I I didn't see if this was mentioned anywhere and you didn't mention it. Is the Potrero Avenue pavement renovation done? Yes, the Potrero Avenue pavement renovation was completed in 2018. Okay, so so okay, 2018. So I guess this this is now again finance for dummies here. How, how have we had $737,000 sitting around since 2018? If, if, if that is correct, I'm just trying to make sure I understand all of this. Um, yes, so when a project is completed, there is a financial closeout um, phase that happens and um, Public Works might want to speak to this. Um, I know uh, they experienced significant delays for several reasons, including um, staff turnover, um, following project completion, key personnel left the department, which impacted the ability to finalize the closeout. Um, so that's, of course, the pandemic happened <laughs> as well. Okay, great. So basically we have this project, it closed. We finally got all of our ducks in a row and we found out we had an extra $737,000. Is that it? And now we want to spend it on these other two projects. Great. Okay. I think I understand now. <laughs> Thank you for answering city finances for Rachel. No, well, thanks you for your questions. Member <laughs> is is there a reason that the streets that were were chosen were in such different parts of the city? Was this just a, a list of streets that were queued up to, to get repairs next or or something else? Um, I, I'm Anna Lafort, Deputy Director for Policy and Programming. Happy, happy to let DPW jump in here, but there are many more streets in need of paving than, our, um, than we have funding for. So there are, are always some factors that um, are at play, but being ready to go is really important and, and paramount because we want to, our desire is to close out the Prop K program as soon as Prop K funded projects are done with the limited exception of projects that are eligible based on the original Prop K scope of work that have immediate funding needs. And these two projects are both ready to go. One is under construction actually, and one is ready ready to go immediately. So those those were factors at play. Thank you very much. Are there any other questions or comments from members on this item? No. Oh, uh, member Margarita. Um, thank you so much. I just quick question. Can you tell us what part of the cities, obviously the one in the sunsets in the sunset, but the long street? Where is that located in the city, just for geographical understanding? It's in the southern part of the city, um, very close to the BART station at Daly City, I believe. Is that right? It's adjacent to Thank you. Are there any other questions or comments from members? Uh, not seeing any. Is there any public comment in the room on this item? Edward Mason, uh, I guess my only comment is regarding the uh, ferry terminal. 
uh, where it says that um, the new scope is to uh, construct additional security fencing. When I read this, it implied that we didn't do it right the first time by having this missed area of security required. So I'm just wondering how our business process and our engineering process goes that uh, possibly needs improvement and continuous improvement so we don't miss something as serious as security. Um, had this been built the first time around, uh, we'd have a gap in there and not know it. So I'm just wondering about our business process and how well we do in evaluating what the scope of requirement is. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I don't see any other public comment in the room. Is there any remote public comment on this item? There is no remote public comment for this item. Great. Uh, public comment is closed. Uh, this is an action item. Can I get a motion and a second on this item? Moved by Member Ortega. Kim, second. Seconded by Member Kim. Uh, Madam Clerk, can we get a roll call vote, please? On the motion to approve item six, Member Bars. Bars, aye. Bars, aye. Vice Chair Daniels. Aye. Daniels, aye. Member Ford. Ford, aye. Board I, Member Kim. Kim I. Kim I, Member Levine. Levine I, Levine, I Member Margarita. Margarita. Okay, there you go. Okay, <laughs> sorry. That's okay. Margarita I, Member Milford Rosales. Milford Rosales I. Milford Rosales I, Member Ortega. Ortega I. Ortega I, Chair Siegel. Siegel I. Siegel I, there are nine I's. The motion is approved. Great, thanks again so much for the presentation. Um, that puts us on item seven, which is the investment report and debt expenditure report for the quarter ended June 30th, 2024. And this is an information item. And Cynthia Fong, Deputy Director for Finance and Administration is with us to present this item. Good evening, CAC. This is your quarterly update of typically what we would have is our internal accounting report, which would be the financial position for the on the Transportation Authority. But since we're in the process of um, year-end closing citywide, I'm here to only present investment compliance and the debt compliance. And then in, and I hope in November, I will be presenting um, an audit for all of you to review in addition to year-end numbers. So in terms of um, our investment compliance, we ended June 30th, 2024 with approximately $70.5 million. 44% uh, of this amount is sitting in within the city pool and uh, earning an interest rate of 3.74 for the month of June 30th. Uh, we are in compliance with the California Government Code and also the TA's board approved uh, investment policy. Moving forward, um, I'd like to talk about the debt compliance. Um, as of June 30th, um, we had no outstanding uh, loans from our 125 revolving credit agreement. Uh, however, next week I plan on drawing down, uh, with your approval from the last CEC meeting, uh, $22.8 million for uh, light you know, vehicles and other vehicles. Uh, we had received an invoice, have paid it, and now seeking from US Bank a reimbursement for those funds. Um, interest rate. For next week is hovering around 3.47%. Um, if you cut on interest rates for uh, the city pool account, it's actually slightly higher at 3.74% uh, versus 3.47%. Uh, That's I have those percentages pretty close. Uh, so I'm glad to see that. Um, we've been trying to use on uh, use um, cash on hand to pay for our bills and not draw down from uh, the loan unless we really needed to. So this is your update uh, as of in as of 930 I will report out uh, where we stand with the revolving credit agreement. If you have any questions I'm happy to answer them. Great thank you so much. Uh, are there any questions or comments from members? Seeing any, uh, 
Is there any public comment in the room on this item? Not seeing any. Is there any remote public comment on this item? There's not. Great. Um, well, then, thank you so much for the presentation. Um, that puts us on item eight, which is the introduction of new business. And this is an information item. Uh, member or Vice Chair Daniels. Good evening. I would like to request that we have an update from the Valencia Street bike project and what's happening. I would also like to um, ask if there was any recommendations from the skateboard subcommittee and if there is any plan to continue the subcommittee. Uh, member Ortega. Hey, yeah, I think that this is this is a request for um, SFMTA. Um, I it's both a sort of a comment and also just sort of a hopeful question that they can come back to at least me with information. Um, there's a proposed street change for the J stops um, from Clipper to 26th Street and from 27th Street to 28th Street, um, along with the addition of a new stop sign at 28th Street. Um, I do want to commend SFMTA. I had a flyer in my mailbox about this, which I think is great because that's like they're telling all the residents that are on the streets that it's nearby. But I also wanted to provide some feedback that the public hearing for this is at 10 a.m. on a Friday, which I feel is not really inclusive to people that are working. I am fortunate and I can carve out time in my schedule to go to this, but that's prime meeting time for a lot of working adults. And as far as I can see, according to this flyer, that is the only public hearing about moving two transit stops on a line that is fiercely protected by the residents uh, whom they do not always feel gets the fair share from SFMTA. And I feel like this change should be open to more comment and public thing, especially by people in the neighborhood that are working or have commitments at that time, as this is the only time. And I know that there is an email address, but I feel like that is with the concerns that have been expressed to this committee and to the SFMTA, I feel like an email that is sent, there would be concern that it would not be addressed. And I would like SFMTA to provide at least me an update on the entirety of that discussion um, where I will be joining and providing comments to them. Um, we won't bog down the entire committee with them here. But I, I would like to hear from SFMTA on when they do outreach programs, if this is standard um, or how they do other types of like public hearing timelines. And again, that can be sent just to me. I don't know if anyone else in this committee wants to hear that, but um, yeah. So so applause for the flyers and all, everything taped to the very nice structure that they want to move down the street, um, which is also part of my questions. Um, but I feel that the time is, it, 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 it's not convenient for people to actually go and provide updates, right? So I feel like it's, it's kind of a moot point. They can say that they had a hearing if this ever comes back for funding approval, but it's like the hearing was at 10 a.m. How, how is that helpful for the residents that are working in the neighborhood? Like myself, my partner, my neighbor who has to commute to South Bay. Like that's, it's, it's just not ideal. Um, so also apply, there's a hearing on, if you want to hear about the J on a Friday at 10 a.m. <laughs> Come join. <laughs> Member Ford. I was wondering if there are TA funds involved in Better Market Street, which I had the opportunity to commute down a couple times last week, and it had been a while. And it is a project that I would just like to check in on. The pacing seems a little slow. The diversion's a little unthought out. The general 
how are we executing this seems a little awkward. And I guess I'd like to have an update of what we expect and when it will wrap up. Thank you. Member Levine. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so I, I was wondering if we might consider a motion of support from the uh, CAC for the uh, gross receipts tax on uh, ride, ride uh, um, hailing uh, companies. Um, it seems as though the most um, as many uh, as many places that we can get support would be helpful, and this is us. So if we can um, somehow formally uh, initiate a, uh, a motion of support, that would be great. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, are there any other uh, uh, new business from members? Uh, is there any public comment in the room on new business? No. Uh, is there any remote public comment on new business? There is no remote public comment on new business. Great. Uh, public comment on this item is closed. Um, then that puts us on item nine, which is public comment. This is general public comment on items under the Transportation Authority CAC's purview that are not otherwise agendized at this meeting. Is there anyone in the hearing room wishing to give public comment? Thank you, Edward Mason. Uh, this is a street tree story. Uh, my neighbor uh, is going to renew his homeowner's insurance. And the company said, no, we're not doing business in California anymore. So we went out and searched for a new insurance company uh, for homeowner's insurance. And they came out and said, you know that uh, eucalyptus tree you got there that's been there for 40 years, uh, that's got to get pruned and trimmed and shaped and put back. Uh, and because we're not going to insure your property unless that tree is fixed, basically. So the bottom line is there's two trees, one in front of his residence and then one that staggers two adjacent houses. The bottom line is they had to go out. He went out and had to get a tree service to come out and prune and shape the tree to meet the requirement of the insurance company. And the other two, since the uh, company was there, well, they got the other tree also trimmed. Now these trees are eucalyptus trees they're probably, in my memory, at least 40 years old there, and so they're massive. The point is that when you vote to approve tree planting, you're not thinking 30 and 40 years later. Now, this tree was pruned about a year ago, and I visually saw it being pruned, and all they did was snip, snip, snip along the top so the tree branches wouldn't go up into the utility lines. But the rest of the tree had huge hanging branches and everything else. And so he had to go to personal expense when the city says, oh, we're going to maintain the trees. The bottom line is the city is not maintaining trees and place the burden of responsibility on the homeowner. So I just want to bring this street tree story up to you so you realize that when you go and uh, vote on it, you know, you're creating a possible problem 20, 10, 20, 30 years from now uh, for homeowners on that. So that's my street tree story for tonight. And uh, be cognizant of that in your future deliberations. Thank you. Can I make a comment on that? Okay, I, I would just say I, I want to uh, I concur with that. I, and the, the reality is that if, in fact, a homeowner does do any trimming to the tree, the city will disavow apparently any future uh, responsibility for that tree. So, so it's a it's a bad situation. Uh, is there any remote public comment? No, there is no remote public comment to this item. Great. Uh, then that puts us on item 10, which is adjournment. And this meeting is now adjourned. Our next meeting will be on September 25th. Thank you all. Thank you.